Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of how to use three of the top VPNs on the market, and those would be this one over here, ExpressVPN, this one, NordVPN, and Surfshark. I've tested and researched many VPNs out there, both free and paid, and these three have consistently come out in pretty much all categories as the top VPNs available on the market right now. So with ExpressVPN, you would go over here to the location bar, click on that, and then a window will pop up with all of the countries that you can connect to. With Express, it will be 105 countries. And for a lot of them, you'll have this arrow that you can click on, and you'll have more cities or regions within the country that you can connect to. So for example, let's say I wanted to connect to a server in Dallas. I can click on that and hit connect. And in just a second or two, it'll turn green and it'll say connected. And that's all you need to do to get started with a VPN. Now, anything you do over the internet will be secured by the VPN. Nobody will be able to access that information. No government, no internet service provider, not even the VPN themselves, and definitely no hackers or other people with malicious intent will be able to access your personal information. And on top of that, because I'm connected up to a server in the US, regardless of where you're gonna be physically located, anything you do on the internet, any website or application you use will think that you're in the US. So for example, if I was gonna go to Netflix or any other streaming service like Hulu or Amazon Prime Video, it's gonna think that I'm in the US and offer me the entire content library, all the movies and TV shows that are gonna be available in the United States, regardless of where you're physically located in the world. So that's how you would do it with ExpressVPN. With NordVPN, you have two options. You can either use their interactive map interface over here and connect up to a server by just clicking on one of these little nodes. So let's say I wanted to connect to a server in Spain. I can just go here and connect to a server in Madrid. I'll click on that. It's gonna say connecting over here on the left uh, window. And in just a second or two, I'll be connected up to a server in Spain. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the map, you also can search over here in the countries tab. You can search for the connections and you can find them all over here. And with Surfshark, it's also going to be more similar to ExpressVPN. You're going to have over here in the left side your list of countries and you can also search for them over here. By the way, with NordVPN, you're going to get access to 111 countries and with Surfshark, 100. And in case you are thinking about using a VPN and having access to all of these countries and basically streaming content from all over the world, I'll be sure to have a link in the description below for each of these VPNs that will save you some extra money if you do want to try any of them out. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was something called a protocol. And in ExpressVPN, we can find that by going to the menu over here, going into the options and clicking on the protocol tab. And what a VPN is, it's basically like the messenger service, the connection between your computer and the VPN server. And just like in real life, some delivery services are going to be faster than others, and some may only be available in different parts of the world, the same thing is going to be true with a protocol. So with ExpressVPN, you're going to have two main options. Now, OpenVPN is older and it's been around longer, so it's going to be available in more parts of the world and across more servers. Whereas Lightway is the newer one, it was built by ExpressVPN themselves, and it's going to be faster, but it may not be available in as many places. I personally always have Lightway UDP selected because it's the fastest option. If you're not sure, you can always click automatic and ExpressVPN will choose the best one for you. In NordVPN, you can find the protocol by going over to this gear icon, the settings, going to your connection, and the first option here is VPN protocol. Again, you're either gonna be able to choose OpenVPN, NordLynx, which is NordVPN's recommended protocol. It is the fastest one of these options right here. And again, you're also gonna have the automatic option. In Surfshark, you can find the protocol by going to the settings, going to VPN settings, scrolling down, and you're gonna have protocol. And again, same story, either OpenVPN or WireGuard, which is the OpenVPN alternative that Surfshark uses, and this will be the fastest one. And again, you also have the automatic option. And lastly, I wanted to talk about two of the main features that you're gonna find on most VPNs and in all three of these. So in ExpressVPN, again, you'll find this in the options menu in the general tab. And you're gonna have two features right here. One is called network lock. It's also called a kill switch by a lot of other VPNs. This is going to disconnect your internet if the VPN ever stops working. So you're gonna wanna use this if you're connected up to a network, which may not be very safe, it may be vulnerable. You would just have the VPN active when you're using that network and then enable the kill switch, the network lock, and this will ensure that whenever you're connected to the internet, you're also using the VPN at the same time. Now, the second feature over here is split tunneling. 
This allows you to choose exactly what you want the VPN connected to, because if we would click on this and then go to the settings, the default option is that all apps use the VPN, meaning that whenever you're connected to the VPN, everything that you're doing is going through the VPN tunnel, as it's called. But there may be times where you don't want the location to change to whatever you selected in the VPN. So you can do that by clicking do not allow selected apps to use the VPN and then adding it by clicking the plus icon. And you can also choose exactly which apps you do want to use the VPN with this one right here. In NordVPN, again, we go to the settings, and then you're gonna have both of these features right here, kill switch and split tunneling. With NordVPN, they actually have a nice little feature where you can modify the kill switch to only quit specific apps. It's kind of like a cross between the kill switch and split tunneling. You can choose exactly which apps should, if the VPN would ever stop working. And in Surfshark as well, in the settings, we're gonna have on top of the protocol, you have the kill switch feature, and underneath the protocols, you're gonna have bypasser, which is what Surfshark calls their split tunneling feature. So that's a rundown of the basic features of each of these VPNs and how to use them. Now you might be wondering which VPN is gonna be the right one for you. So just in short, ExpressVPN is a minimalistic kind of VPN. This is for somebody who wants a really powerful VPN, but doesn't need a lot of the features or bells and whistles that you're gonna find in a lot of the other applications. With ExpressVPN, a lot of the technology is going on behind the scenes, and on the surface, it's just a very simple and intuitive VPN. In my opinion, Express also has the best reputation when it comes to privacy and security because they've done the most third-party audits by having outside companies come in and check their systems and ensure that they really are not keeping any personal information on their own servers. Now, if you are somebody who's like, yeah, give me all the features, all the bells and whistles, then I would definitely recommend NordVPN to you. This VPN has just a ton going on. You have specialty servers where you have different options, different kinds of servers. Just an example, double VPN will connect you up to two different servers before getting you over to the internet, giving you an added layer of security. They also have an add-on called Threat Protection Pro. This is like a mini antivirus, and this has also been tested and reviewed by outside companies and scored very well. So if you're somebody who wants to get the most out of what a VPN can do, you want to really push it to the limit, the NordVPN might be a really good option to look into. And lastly, Surfshark is what I would call the best budget or best value VPN. Surfshark is the cheapest of the three options here. The premium plan for Surfshark is still going to be cheaper than the basic plan for most other VPNs, but at the same time, you're gonna get a bunch of really high level features and add-ons. It doesn't necessarily offer as much as NordVPN, and it's not as intuitive as ExpressVPN, but for the price that you're paying, if you're on a budget, I would definitely say that Surfshark is the best VPN to go with. Now, if you wanna find out even more about these VPNs, I'll be sure to leave links for full in-depth reviews for each one of them in the description below, as well as discount links that will save you some extra money if you do wanna try them out. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.